Um, we'll get started now, everyone. Hope you've all had a good week. Okay, I'm just going to call in uh, Jonathan Gray. Hang on, I'll just share my screen. Just, all right, everyone. So I've got Jonathan Gray here on the line. So just type a Y in the text chat if you can hear everything okay and see my screen. All right, perfect. So Jonathan, um, we're gonna pick up where we left off from last week's webinar. So we got halfway through the questions. So today's first question I'd love to ask you is, um, well, this is the question that's probably most fascinated me, is you were involved in the discovery of Noah's Ark on Mount Ararat in Turkey. Can you please share your evidence and the story of how you found this? Well, uh, the, the man who actually recognised it first as, as the remains of Noah's Ark was an American archaeologist, uh, Ronald Wyatt, uh, and I actually didn't believe that he had found it. And I think I may have mentioned last time that I set off with a briefcase full of objections to prove him wrong. And I, I took my own teams across to Turkey uh, into the uh, eastern Turkey region close to the border with uh, Iran. And this uh, was an object that was seen by a Turkish Air Force pilot initially. And uh, then uh, the, the gradual accumulation of evidence uh, started uh, a, a series of some 34 visits to the site, which included uh, some very interesting finds. Now, the the, the reason I, I did, one of the main reasons I did not believe him, I, I thought that the boat was supposed to be on Big Mount Ararat. But the book of Genesis, uh, written at the time, says that it landed in the mountains of Uraratu. Now, Uratu was a kingdom which is now occupying the, the eastern half of Turkey. But in the days when the, the record was written, uh, Uratu was a kingdom that, that still existed. Now, I did not believe it was on mount, uh, on the mountains. Uh, I, I thought that it was an on big, big mount, Ararat. And uh, I had uh, s reports from various people saying they'd seen something up on big mount Ararat. But of course, that could not have been so because uh, Mount Ararat did not exist at the time of the flood. It's a post-flood volcanic mountain and it has come up since. And in our day, of course, it is the biggest mountain in the area. But the scripture says the mountains of Ararat and uh, mountain range, actually. So that's where this object was. Now, when I went in there, I took my own teams of scientists. Uh, we, we did our own testing of lots of, of things that we saw. And uh, the evidence that this is the remains of Noah's Ark gradually became stronger. Mm. Now, one very interesting thing was that there were ships, anchor stones in the vicinity. Now, anchor stones hang down in the sea from ancient shipping. But that's how they used to do it in those days. They, they, the anchors would hang down, big stone anchors would hang down from the bottom of a boat on both sides and stabilise the boat in rough seas and, and rough tempests. And the Great Flood was the roughest uh, destruction the world has ever seen. Water, continents and seas churned up together. Now, these anchor stones, uh, we found 13 of them. And they were gradually going in a, a curved line up to the, the remains of this wreck that we saw in the mountains. Now, this was about 12,000 feet, no, uh, I'm sorry, about 6,000 feet, uh, 2,000 metres above sea level. And uh, it had ship's anchor stones right coming up to it. So obviously, this was a boat that had uh, been up here and it was now a mess but it was a boat shape was still very clear and outside the formation there was no um, no pattern of metal 
but inside the boat shape, there was a distinct pattern of metal, a pattern of iron at regular intervals, and uh, regular vertical structure around the sides, crossed by horizontal formation to form a lattice work. And we found lots of petrified laminated wood, laminated being layers of wood are stuck together by some adhesive. Today we have three ply, small, a very thin three ply, but here, th this was like, like three ply, except it was much, much larger, about um, a third of a meter thick with three layers stuck together. And this went right across from one side of, of the structure to the other. So what we had here was petrified laminated wood. And uh, this was deck timber. Now, also we found fossilized rivets, which contained a sophisticated alloy. Now, that's a very interesting thing because these rivets contained a, a mixture, an alloy of uh, titanium, which has only been used in our day in the space age, yeah. titanium and aluminium in a way that uh, nature doesn't produce it. It was found this way, and uh, there, there were 4,300 of these joining all the, 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 the iron uh, crisscross pieces at regular intervals, these fossilized rivets, and also four-foot-long metal rods and iron angle brackets. Now, also, there was waste product from some type of metal production coming out of the boat shape from a location that suggests it could have been used as ballast to, to steady the boat in the, in the basement. Also, uh, in, uh, when holes were drilled in the side of the structure, they penetrated uh, uh, some type of uh, cavity and uh, from that cavity came out animal dung and even an antler of a deer. Oh, so wow. we knew that this structure had contained animals. Amazing. Yes, absolutely. Now, we, we had the radar readings and radar readings were made by many other people and the radar showed evidence of man-made structure, no question about it. Three layers. Uh, Two, two, top two had collapsed onto the bottom layer and the book of Genesis says there were three decks to the ark. Now, on, on this uh, evidence, we found walls. There were walls and there were cavities in straight lines. There were tank shapes. There were passageways. There was a side door about eight feet to uh, two and a half meters wide and three ramps going down uh, horizontally and upward to the three levels. So this structure was definitely uh, what we should look for and, and should expect to find if this was the remains of Noah's Ark. Now the formation was the correct size. Its length was 515 feet, that's 148 uh, metres, about one and a half times longer than a football field. So it was, it was the right length, it was also the right breadth to be Noah's Ark. And it was also in the correct location, the biblical mountains, plural, of Ararat. Now... The radar revealed the presence of what we could say there were walls and cavities and a door near the south end and ramps and there were chambers. Along the keel, there is timber 20 feet through and at, and at the same end as the door, near the door, near the bow, there were two large round tanks, 14 feet high and 24 feet across with metal bands around them. And the deck support timbers are intact along the western side. This can be seen by radar. Wow. So uh, we've got here a plenty of evidence that this is the remains of Noah's Ark. And as a matter of fact, the Turkish government has declared this an international historic park. Incredible. And, 
and they're planning to build a big museum there, the Turkish government, very soon. Oh, so that's in the making at the moment. That's right. Wow, okay. This is amazing. Thank you for sharing that, Jonathan. Um, so we'll move on to the next question. So my partner tells me how the Bible was altered and there is a conspiracy um, to alter it and destroy its power. He says Dr. David Daniels, Dr. Gail Rippinger and Professor Alistair McGrath all show how the King James Version and Geneva Bible are the only accurate English Bibles. Is this true? They have been deliberately altered and even had Satanist witches and spiritists secretly influencing Bible translations. Yes, it's absolutely true. Wow. Now, it's interesting that when King James uh, authorised the, the translation of the Bible in, in, in the English language to be made available to uh, all, uh, all people who wanted to read it, uh, the Bible actually was a chained book. It was a book that was burnt by the ruling powers for many, many years. And King James wanted to, to make a break from, from that tyranny and make the Bible available to people because he believes it was something that uh, they needed. Now, what happened uh, as a result of that was that there was an attempt on his life. Uh, when he was visiting Parliament, uh, the, the attempt against him was to stop the Bible being, being printed uh, in the English language for all that would want it. And so there was a gunpowder plot to blow up the Houses of Parliament, the British Houses of Parliament, while King James was addressing it. That actually is the, uh, uh, the event that gives us Guy Fawkes Day, because the man who actually was uh, the conspirator to blow up Parliament, his name was Guy Fawkes. Wow. And Guy Fawkes is a day when fireworks are let off, as, as you know, in, yeah. in our various communities. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's in honour of, of, of the attempt to blow up Parliament. Most people don't know that bit of history. Yeah. Okay. But when they did not succeed and the King James Bible came out, uh, it was the work of 72 of the best scholars that Britain had who understood the Greek and Hebrew languages, the, the Old Testament being, being uh, originally written in the Hebrew and the, uh, the New Testament in the Greek, because in the days of Christ and, and, and early Christianity, the, the universal language was Greek. Today it's English, but it was coined Greek. And so to translate it into English, uh, he used the best scholars and they compared notes, they crisscrossed each other, they checked each other, and uh, it's, it, that Bible is, is in at a time when the English language was very poetic sounding and very beautifully uh, uh, prepared. Uh, the Bible was, was actually translated at that time. So that's why the English language of the King James Bible um, is, is often looked upon as, as a classical uh, piece of language. Now, after that, the, those that wanted to uh, get rid of the Bible, they decided, well, we can't destroy it anymore. Uh, it looks like we've lost that, that round. So let's get some counterfeit Bibles out. And this is what's been happening. The, the modern versions actually are an attempt by people who do not like the Bible to get uh, something out that will leave out uh, truths and add in other things that are not true so that people wouldn't know what the truth really was. Yeah. Now, it's interesting that five of the new version editors have become dumb after they did their job. They permanently lost their ability to speak. One of them started having hallucinations and he became mentally deranged. He went insane and ended up in a mental institution. Now, the editors of the new versions, you will find them in agreement with Lucifer Luciferians, that's people who worship Satan, that worship the devil, occultists, and New Age ph philosophy. Uh, you'll find them in agreement with the seance parlors and in prison cells and denying that salvation is through faith in Jesus Christ. That is the result that has uh, uh, come from the new versions. 
they are not accurate, they give the excuse that this is better English, easier to understand, but no. Uh, you can give the King James Bible to a third world person who doesn't know English very well and they'll understand it well. The King James Bible is, is easy to understand and uh, the New Age versions actually were a conspiracy to replace it or get rid of it. And uh, in many countries today it's being used, uh, the, the New Age uh, Bibles are being used and people don't know that... Uh, they are contaminated with a lot of things that are not right. Very interesting. Wow, I didn't know that history. So thank you for sharing, Jonathan. So our next question, is it true there have been people struck dumb and experienced horrible divine consequences for doing this? Uh, yes. Yeah, yes, definitely true. Yeah, wow. Can you give us some examples? Or do you know any personally? I don't know any of them personally, no. Okay, that's okay. Um, the Pentagon yesterday, um, not yesterday, well, last week released video evidence of UFOs. So what's your take on this and UFOs generally? Okay. Now, UFOs um, are being promoted, have been promoted by a couple of people as uh, being the, the source of man's uh, existence here on Earth. Uh, and uh, a man called Eric von Daniken, uh, a European man who uh, wanted to make a lot of money, found that this, this captured the imagination of people, that uh, uh, people from visitors from outer space came, they interbred with, uh, with, shall we say, half humans, half apes, and they produced modern man. Uh, and he was ta his uh, idea was taken up by another man called uh, uh, Zechariah Sitchin, and he told much the same. And uh, the uh, the idea of UFOs was a substitute for the evolution theory. A lot of people, uh, knowing the theory of evolution, which is taught in our schools, uh, decided that they would. Um, go one better. Evolution theory, of course, the, 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 uh, the idea behind it is to get rid of God. Most people don't like to think that they owe allegiance to a higher power. They want to do their own thing and be master of themselves. Uh, so get rid of, get God out of the picture. And the only other option, uh, it was thought, was Darwin's theory of uh, evolution, that we all came here by accident. Mm -hmm. Well, there's lots of full flaws in that and it's very easily disproved. In fact, I've written a book on, on that very subject, the, the discovery that's toppling evolution. There's no doubt at all, evolution is, cannot not be proven as a fact. It's not scientific. In fact, it's anti-scientific and it's very easy to disprove it. Yeah. And when, a, when an evolutionist and a creationist get into a debate, the evolutionist invariably loses because the evidence does not support his claims. So knowing this, von Däniken and Sitchin came out with the idea, well, why don't we, we still keep God out of the picture? So what we will do is we will um, uh, say that people from ex uh, extraterrestrials, from outer space, aliens, came in and interbred with half animal, half men, and produced like man. Now, UFOs actually have been used to, to prove this. But UFOs come in and they say, oh, well, we've got little, little men from Mars or from somewhere else, look at them. And they draw pictures of what appears to be something genuine, but is not. Now, UFOs do appear, of course. A UFO simply means unidentified flying object. And certain governments have produced circular aircraft. It can be done. It's, it's, a, it's a technology that mankind can produce. And uh, various governments have been involved in, the, in this kind of, uh, of, of, of rotary uh, aircraft. Uh, that's, no, that's not a problem. It can be done. But the speed with which they can be uh, measured is also uh, not known to most of us, but... 
it can be done mechanically. It can, can be done actually with, uh, with using the laws of nature. Now, however, there are genuine visitors from somewhere that are claiming to be from other worlds, and they do kidnap people. In fact, quite a few um, people, several million people, have said that they have been kidnapped. And the interesting thing about it is that um, these creatures, whoever they are, uh, their, their big concern is to destroy the reputation of Jesus Christ. It's interesting, if they come from an unknown world, why would they be interested in Jesus Christ who lived here on this earth? Why, why is this their big, their big hang-up? Uh, the Bible t talks to us about uh, a rebellion in the heavens a uh, long time ago by one of the, the, the inhabitants of the, the heavenly kingdom who was Lucifer. Uh, we, actually, his name was Lucifer, and uh, then he he uh, spoke against the Creator. He he wanted to be up in his place, and uh, he cast doubt against the government of of, of the Creator. And uh, so he was given a chance to prove his claim. God said, "If I destroy you now, people will always be in doubt and think I'm a tyrant because that's what you're saying I am." So I'm going to give you a chance to live on and prove your kingdom. And uh, eventually, when I destroy it, there'll be no doubt as to who's telling the truth, you or me. Now, that, that was the, that was the uh, attitude that, that our Creator took, a very wise one, because people had never seen death before. But when they see Lucifer hijacking planet Earth, and then they see the centuries of hatred and war and pain and sickness and death on this planet. Eventually, when the Creator does intervene, it will be seen that his way of hands off was, was, the, was the best way, and that Lucifer and his kingdom has been a total failure. And this is what we're seeing in the world today. We're seeing this hijacked planet, and they actually ha do impersonate people from other worlds, and they claim to be from other worlds, when really they're from this earth. They, they have taken over this earth, they've hijacked it, and they're using UFOs, actually, to tell their story. But UFOs actually all have the in, most interesting uh, result when they're challenged. When a person ha is kidnapped by them, and the kidnappings do take place, as I said, several million people testify to, to having been kidnapped. And uh, the, the one big hang-up that these people from the UFOs have in their minds was to attack the integrity of Jesus Christ, who, as, uh, as the Son of God, came to earth to take the place of people who uh, have uh, come under the, the sentence of Luther, Lucifer's control to rescue them and to give them a hope of eternal life again, which was taken from them. Now, our God, our Creator is a, is a beautiful, perfect being. But for us to live forever in, in His presence, under, under His uh, kingship, we have to be in harmony with Him. And that's why a relationship, a personal relationship with Jesus Christ is so important. Uh, he came down, he came down to, to, to do, go through all the ground that we go through and to show that it can be done successfully, that God's law is not something terrible. God is not a tyrant. He came to reveal the love, the kindness, the, the humility, the, the, the sacrificing of himself and then count that to us so that we, accepting him, could uh, have a hope of something better in the days to come. Now, when Lucifer is destroyed finally and his kingdom is destroyed, uh, there'll be no doubt as to whose kingdom is right and he will be totally vindicated. Now, it's interesting that when people are kidnapped today, the big attack is to, to, to brainwash them against Jesus Christ. Now, this is so...
so with all cases. And uh, there's and uh, non-religious UFO uh, students have uh, formed uh, groups of people to try to uh, to understand what's going on and to uh, report on it. And there are UFO societies all around the world which say that they have um, test, tested uh, escape routes from pe for people who have um, uh, been kidnapped by the UFO aliens and that uh, it's never been successful. The fact is, when a person is taken over by these, there's a, uh, they, 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 they try to get away from their control, uh, their minds are, they are spoiled for the rest of their lives, except one group. And that's it, 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 people who are not religious, can't, can't survive it uh, successfully. People who are um, uh, Buddhists, it doesn't, that doesn't help them. People who are Hindus, that doesn't help them. People who are Christians, there's a one group inside Christianity which can be rescued. And those people are the ones who use the name of Jesus Christ and live up to it. And when a, when a UFO alien is commanded in the name of Jesus Christ to leave the person and leave them in peace, they snarl and they go. They cannot stay in the presence of that name. So it's very, very interesting that UFOs versus Jesus Christ is the theme. Most people are not taught that, but it is a fact that UFO in, in investigators have found that there's only one name that can banish the attacks from UFO aliens, and that is the name of Jesus Christ. Something very special about that. Yeah, no, I, I can imagine. That's incredible. Do you know anyone personally who has been kidnapped by UFOs, Jonathan? No, I don't personally. I mean, I've studied the, the, the matter quite a lot uh, and, and written about it, but I, I know... I know people who uh, I know of people. I know people who know people. So yeah. I say that people, people wow. who have been in touch with, with those that have. Yes, I, I've gone that far. Wow. I mean, I, that's such a big topic, and I think I, I have so many thoughts on that. And I often wonder when they are kidnapped, do they actually leave the earth for a while, or does the kidnapping kind of still happen? I guess in the atmosphere on this earth. Uh, the, the, the kidnapping happens, uh, it, it can happen, well, let me tell, tell the story of one. Okay. Uh, over in, in the USA, I know of a man who was, uh, uh, <clears throat> who was in bed with his wife, and he saw, uh, out the window, he saw a bright light, and, and he looked through the window, and he could see this... He, it looked like a UFO of some sort that was circling in the sky uh, not far from the house. And then it stopped and, and landed outside the window of his house. And then he felt himself being seized around the waist. And he was being lifted up off his bed. And uh, he saw this... Uh, devilish looking face and he cried out let me go but then then he cried out in the name of jesus let me go and immediately the, the, the thing went wow and his wife woke up and wondered what he was banging onto the bed for he'd just fallen back onto the bed uh, from up in the air <laughs> incredible wow but that, that, this is the kind of thing that happens. Mm. But unless a person is, has a relationship with Jesus Christ, yeah. uh, the, the, the name uh, the, the name of Jesus is powerful if you have a relationship. Yeah. yeah. No, I've experienced that personally, so it's incredible. Um, well. Yeah. So, so this is an interesting question because this is more relevant to today. So what's your take on the recent developments with the COVID-19? 
Do you see this as a sign of the end times before a great ascension and that we are heading towards a universal economic digital currency implants into our bodies? Well, it's, it's interesting. Men like Bill Gates uh, are talking about this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I'm, not going, I'm not going to get, get into the argument about um, who started this, who started yeah. this uh, CV-19, but... Um, we, we do know that bioweapon bio technology has been developed and uh, that the, there are globalists who want to, a new world order and they want to control everybody and they want actually to get rid of most of the world's population. And, uh, they, uh, and this could very well be uh, a means whether they have themselves developed this which it is claimed is, is a fact, or whether they're just going to use this as a lever to get full control uh, it is, is not really the, the important issue. The important issue is, uh, is where is this going to lead? Uh, are we heading toward a universal economic digital currency implanted into our bodies? Well, now, this is being spoken of by men like Bill Gates, who have been involved in, in, uh, in some of the uh, research for bioweaponry. And the idea is, all right, get the whole world afraid, get them to, to think that they uh, are in danger, and then come over and... As, like a big brother, say, okay, we'll keep you safe. You've got to have a vaccination, whether you like it or not, and we're going to implant a, uh, a, a, an ID system into your body that will enable us to track you and decide whether you're allowed to buy or sell. But to be allowed to buy or sell, you have to follow the universal laws which we're going to set up for you. And if you don't like to do it, then you don't deserve to live. You're one of those that must go off, off the planet. Now, according to biblical prophecy, uh, Jesus himself said, in fact, uh, three times in the Bible, it stated that there's coming a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation until that same time. Now, this can, can include the, the virus, uh, or it can also include, uh, uh, well, shall I say, that this C CP19 uh, matter has actually caused a tremendous collapse of world economies. Mm. And uh, I I'm in touch with people who are actually uh, among the top economists in the world. And uh, we were able to, uh, to, to link up what they're saying with what the Bible is saying and say that we are entering that time now. We're in the little time of trouble before the big one. And that uh, uh, this time of trouble will, is the greatest financial time of trouble the world has ever seen, greater than the 1929 30s depression. In fact, only today, uh, that was repeated by one of the world's leading economists who has stated that this depression this financial depression that that we're now starting to go through is worse than the any depression that the world has ever seen financially. But the financial is simply the the result of um, uh, the, the the physical uh, traumas that people are going through. And uh, CV19 is is being used to abolish the currencies of the world. Uh, with exactly what you, in your question, you mentioned, uh, uh, Sammy, that uh, we're heading towards economic digital currency, and, and that actually is, is looking very, very likely now. Yeah. Uh, we don't know how long it would take to get that done, but uh, it, it's, it's in the drawing board, it's in the plans. And uh, Jesus said, uh, when this is, he says, but be not troubled, for the end is not yet. And then he goes in and gives more details of relating to the big time of trouble. And no way out for mankind except the return of, of Jesus Christ as King of Kings. Mm. 
and Lord of Lords for his people to catch up those who uh, who are have a relationship with him and rescue them from this world that man has uh, destroyed. Wow. No, I, I think um, the Bible has really um, helped me a lot personally during this time um, in terms of faith and just kind of just seeing this whole situation from a very different perspective. I mean, if I hadn't known about these, um, these biblical prophets and I don't, I don't think I'd be in, uh, in the place I am today mentally and spiritually. So, yeah. Oh, they're very, they're very good. Yes. Well, uh, our God knows the future, past, present and future yeah. are all in the present for him. So he can see it and he can tell us about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, biblical prophecy really is uh, amazing. Uh, 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 other so-called prophets like Nostradamus and so on, they're only a little bit, a little bit and it's by the, yes, by the laws of, of chance that they have got some things right. But the laws of chance say that you won't get everything wrong but you'll get a, a, most things wrong and a few things right if you try to predict the future. And uh, that's what they've done. But uh, the Bible has never yet had a failure. Mm. And it's interesting, there's more than 1,000 prophecies in the Bible. And some of them are time prophecies that give us an indication whether we're close to a certain event or not. Incredible. Wow. I didn't know about the time prophet prophecies. Um, so... Um, how far away do you think we are from, say, like the great ascension that's prophesized in the Bible? I believe it's coming sooner than we think. Yeah. And, and I'm advising people uh, at every opportunity I can to get out of the big cities. Yeah. Get yourself a, a, a place in the country where, you, where there's water or you have access to water with you have to drill for it or it's a stream or something and plant all the food you need plant everything so that you can actually survive without money if you have to and that takes you out of the control of those that would want to destroy you yeah wow because the cities are going to become death traps very soon yeah no i i'm i'm seeing that play out a lot right now so Wow, a lot to take in there, I think, for everyone, including myself. Um, so finally, what do you see as the solution? I know that's a very big, very broad question, and I feel that what you were just touching on was part of that. So can you elaborate more on that, Jonathan? Yes. Now, uh, is, uh, what of the solution? All right. The... The solution is not to plan long term for a financial future or for anything that uh, belongs to the, the, the present worldly system. Our future is no longer uh, with us. This is, this is a ready to pass away any time. And uh, we should be ready to uh, uh, be caught up and uh, to expect our future to be with our Creator. And, and his son, Jesus Christ. Our future is not with this world. Our future is with the next world. And uh, therefore, don't hang everything onto what's coming. Now, we've got to be practical. We've got to live in this world while we're here. But we've got to, we, sh we should do it with the utmost wisdom. As I mentioned, uh, being totally independent of the system is going to be important. Where you, where you won't need lawyers or doctors. And by the way, uh, speaking of doctors, uh, there's so, so much sickness in the world right now. And uh, yet there are laws of health which we have been given. And those laws of health can keep you living and look, looking younger and living longer and uh, without days of sickness and without pain. And it's not necessary because a person gets into their 70s or 80s or 90s, whatever, that, that for them to be in pain or for them to have, have to have walking sticks or or, or, or or wheelchairs or anything. It should not be necessary because the, our body is a wonderful mechanism. It's been created to renew itself. 
and uh, the stem cells that come out of the, in fact, the Bible talks about it, talks about, um, for example, a happy heart does good like a medicine, mm. but a, a broken spirit dries up the bones. Now, from the bones, there comes what we call stem cells. I don't know if most of our listeners have heard of stem cells, but stem cells are the cells that the bone uh, lets out, and from the, from the bones, uh, the stem cells go into uh, the bloodstream, and as the blood circulates, they have their little antennas, and they listen for organs in distress. So if there's a heart problem, uh, the, the stem cells listen and they hear, oh, there's distress signals coming from the heart. Let's go to the heart and turn ourselves into heart cells to replace the sick heart cells. And so the heart is, is, re, is renewing itself. The same for the liver or lungs or anything else. The body is, can renew itself without any medication. A stem cell therapy is, has been discovered it's a hundred years ahead of, of modern science, of, of modern medicine. But there are some people now who are using it to repair sick bodies and getting themselves well again. So learn the laws of health uh, so that you can live independently as a healthy person, no matter how old you are, and uh, you can survive without having to follow the, the rigid, dangerous, and many, and it's going to be a lot of evil laws coming eventually. Mm -hmm. uh, you, get, you don't have to depend on those. You don't have to give up your faith or your hope because the world forces you to. So learning the laws of health physically and learning the spiritual laws in the Bible, those are the laws that will keep you healthy and well and happy and in tune with your Creator until the time comes when you can be taken off this planet. No, I completely agree, Jonathan, and I, I personally know a lot about stem cells, so I'm completely um, on the same page as, as you as that. And, um, you know, I've had my own health journey as well. You know, I've completely recovered and healed myself from an incurable autoimmune disease, um, which I was diagnosed with when I was 10 years old. And so I've been on a very big health journey and, um, you know, I've been symptom and medication free for almost nine years now. So... I know exactly Wonderful. what you're talking about, um, being sovereign with your health, and I'm all for that. So I really encourage everyone to really get on that path and whatever that looks like for them, um, just really starting to explore that and be open to new ways of doing things when it comes to our health and not being reliant on the system, you know? That's right. Yeah. So um, that's all the questions from me. So I'm just going to hand it over to our viewers now and ask, is there any questions from you guys um, for Jonathan? Um, we'd just like to say thank you so much again, Jonathan, for coming on today and finishing our part two. We've really enjoyed your company and your, your knowledge and wisdom is just astounding. So thank you. My pleasure. So I'll just wait if see if there's any questions from anyone. Um. That everyone's saying thank you. That's all right. Um, perfect. Um, so we don't seem to be getting any questions. So I feel everyone's digesting all your wonderful wisdom. So I think we'll wrap it up there today. Very good. Do you have any last words you'd like to say, Jonathan? Any last messages? I, I would say our future now is with our creator. Yeah. Uh, so put that first and foremost above above any any considerations that to to make plans for yourself in this life. Live, live the life as you as you know you should live. Think of others. In fact, the word joy, J O Y. I, I like to uh, paraphrase that by saying Jesus first, others second, yourself last. Put, have that attitude. And you will be a very happy person, happier than the rest of, of the world. I love that. I love it. Thank you. All right. Well, in the meantime, um, I'll be in contact with you via email, Jonathan, about the recording. And okay. Yes, stay safe yes, and well. Let me, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. Oh, thank you so much. You too, Jonathan. And stay safe and well. And... 
We will be in touch very soon. Okay, then. Thanks, Bye. everyone. Have a great week. Bye.